Is it possible that motor oil can actually be improved by adding graphite to it? Back in the 1970s, there was a brand called Arco that actually sold motor oil that had graphite in it. Even nowadays, you can actually go out on Amazon and buy a graphite additive for your motor oil. So the question is, does it actually work? Today, we've got quite a few tests lined up to see if this product can actually improve fuel efficiency and performance. So let's get the testing underway. We'll test the Arco oil in a fuel injected generator to see if there's any improvement to fuel efficiency. We'll test the graphite in a worn engine to see if it improves compression. We'll compare Quaker State conventional motor oil against the vintage Arco graphite oil to see which oil is the best at resisting thermal breakdown or evaporation. We'll test both brands of oil to see which offers the best anti-wear protection. We'll see which brand flows the best when the oil is extremely cold. I had the graphite oil tested by an independent oil testing lab and we'll go over the details of the oil at the end of this video. We'll be testing this Arco multi-grade motor oil that contains graphite. This oil is API service SF, SE, SFCC, and SECC. An oil change with Arco graphite motor oil will help provide improved gasoline mileage and reduce piston ring and cam wear. It exceeds manufacturer's warranty requirements for engines requiring SE, SECC quality motor oil. This is a container of graphite powder I picked up at a tractor equipment dealership. This particular product was actually sold as a lubricant for seed planting equipment. It claims to reduce wear on seed meter components. Let's take a look at this graphite and see what it looks like. I'm actually going to be adding a little bit of extra graphite powder to the motor oil we use in a small engine. We'll be comparing the Arco oil against this Quaker State SAE 10W40 Advanced Durability Motor Oil. Meets or exceeds the requirements of API SN in all previous categories. According to the marketing material on the back of this Quaker State container, the number of checks indicate the performance versus industry standard. Testing conducted on 5W30 viscosity. Quaker State gave this advanced durability three checks for unsurpassed wear protection, but for some reason only one check for extends engine life. With an oil that's called advanced durability, you'd think you'd get more than one check for durability. One check for more performance, one check for extreme temperature protection. Finally, one check for prevents and reduces oil leaks. Before we begin our first test, I need to send off the Arco oil to an oil testing lab. I already sent off the Quaker State to a lab a while back. Wow, that's a dark motor oil. The oil testing lab will provide us with a lot of great information on the oil's anti-wear additive package, detergent and dispersant content, as well as the oil's total base number. While graphite is known for being extremely tolerant of the heat, what about the base oil? Quaker State only gives its oil one check mark for extreme temperature protection, but is it any better than the oil that's 40 years old? We'll see how tolerant these oils are of the heat in our first test. We'll measure out 200 grams of oil into each of the oil containers, then crank up the heat to around 400 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. Hours. I'll rotate the oil containers every 10 minutes just in case one burner is hotter than the other. I'll also monitor the temperature of both oils throughout the test to make sure that they are very close to the same temperature at all times. Both oils will experience an equal amount of time on each burner. Both oils seem to be putting off a lot more vapor than usual, especially the Arco brand. While the graphite in the Arco brand might be able to withstand high heat, the base oil appears to be really struggling. High quality oils resist evaporation and thermal breakdown. At the end of this test, we'll find out how much evaporation has occurred with each brand. Then we'll be using the cooked oil for additional testing to see which oil is the best. It's been right at two hours, so I'm going to go ahead and take the oil off the burners. When we come back, we'll weigh each brand of oil to see how much evaporative loss occurred. The Quaker State oil started off at 430.16 grams. It now weighs 415.74. That's a loss of 14.42 grams. Arco oil started off at 411.07 and now weighs 380.82. That's a loss of 30.25 grams. Definitely a Quaker State win. We'll definitely want to compare the cold oil performance of both the new and the cooked oils for each brand and we'll do that near the end of this video. To ensure accurate test results, we'll go ahead and place the oil in a freezer that's set to 40 below zero Fahrenheit until tomorrow when we test the cold flow of both brands. In the next test, we'll be comparing the lubricity or film strength of each brand. We'll begin by adding 40 milliliters of oil that's been exposed to the heat into the test cups. The test will last right at 10 minutes. The oil has cooled off and this first lubricity test will provide us with some great information on how the oil performs when it's cool. After the test, we'll compare the size of the wear scars on each of the bearings to determine which oil provides the best film strength. While this test doesn't simulate engine operating conditions perfectly, it'll provide us with some great information. This is the Arco oil, check that out. It looks like there's a layer of sludge at the bottom of this container. I've never seen anything like it. This stuff is a mess.
Quaker City is on the left and the Arco Graphite Oil is on the right. Wow, what a huge difference between the two. I really did not anticipate seeing this. I thought both oils would produce about the same size wear scar. The anti-wear additive package in this Arco Graphite Oil is very interesting. I'm also very curious to see those lab results when they finally come back to see if it also has a higher level of zinc. In the next test, we'll be using a fuel injected generator to test the fuel efficiency of both the Quaker State and the Arco motor oils. I'm gonna go ahead and change the oil. I'm gonna put the Quaker State in first and then we'll put in the Arco. I'm gonna start the engine, we'll have to warm up. Once it's fully warmed up, then I'll go ahead and fill up the fuel tank all the way to the top, and then we'll see how long this engine will run with just a Quaker State motor oil. Forty-four minutes and thirty seconds with Quaker State. We're going to add the Arco Graphite Oil next and see if we can get a better run time. When's the last time you had to use a spout like this? In order to purge out all the air from the fuel system, I'm going to go ahead and run this generator for about five minutes, and then we'll start the test after I fill up the fuel tank. Forty-four minutes and thirty seconds was the time to beat, and unfortunately, with the Arco oil, it only ran forty-four minutes and about ten seconds, so about twenty seconds short with the Arco oil. So, unfortunately, the Arco oil did not help the fuel efficiency of this fuel-injected generator. When it comes to selecting a high-quality motor oil, cold oil performance is a huge factor. An oil that flows easily when cold will begin lubricating moving parts of an engine far sooner than an oil that doesn't flow easily. Let's kick off the cold oil flow test to see how each oil flows when very cold. New Arco is in lane 1, cooked Arco lane 2, cooked Quaker State lane 3, and new Quaker State lane 4. None of the oils seem to be aware that the race has started, but the Quaker State is beginning to move. And the new Quaker State is the first to hit the track with the cooked Quaker State trying to catch up. The Quaker State has already made a lot of progress down the track, but here comes the cooked Arco. Can the graphite help the Arco catch up with Quaker State? And the new Arco is finally out of the gate heading down the track, but Team Quaker State is nearing the final stretch. The heat really put a hurt on both cooked oils, causing the Quaker State to gain viscosity while the Arco lost viscosity. And the new Quaker State crosses the finish line first. The cooked Quaker State finishes ahead of the cooked Arco by over four inches. What a great race by Team Quaker State. I'm going to mix this 5W30 Haviland motor oil with this graphite in the next test. And then we're going to run it in a lawnmower engine for right at about 30 minutes. And we'll see if there's been any improvement on compression. Wow, it didn't take long for that motor oil to become really dark. That actually mixed together very well. The oil level is full.
Quaker State's on the left and the Arco Oil is on the right with some very interesting test results. No sort of trace metals in the Quaker State, but there's definitely a problem with this Arco Oil with six parts per million of iron, definitely on the high side. Quaker State has 116 parts per million of moly. Arco doesn't have any moly in it. The Quaker State has 67 parts per million of boron and the Arco only has one part per million. This is where things become very interesting. Calcium is a detergent dispersant and the Quaker State has 1,447 parts per million. The Arco has 1,985. I completely understand why the Quaker State did not do nearly as well as the Arco on the Lubristi test machine. Quaker State only has 475 parts per million of phosphorus, which is an anti-wear additive compared to almost three times as much with the Arco. Zinc is also another excellent anti-wear additive and the Quaker State has under 600 parts per million while the Arco has nearly three times as much. So when you factor in, the Arco oil has the graphite, which is a lubricant. On top of that, it has three times as much anti-wear additives that really does help explain the tremendous difference as far as performance on the lubricity tester. The Quaker State and the Arco both had normal viscosity. The flash point of both oils was very close, 415 for Quaker State, 410 for Arco. The TBN is the oil's ability to resist becoming acidic. So the vintage Arco actually had a higher TBN than the newer Quaker State. I'm really curious if you've ever used graphite in motor oil or if there's some other type of additive that you've used that's delivered great results. If you have used graphite, what kind of results have you seen? I was really surprised to see a compression increase in the lawn mower. However, we did not see any sort of fuel efficiency gains. So the question is, would I use graphite in a modern engine? Absolutely not. Unfortunately, I think it would cause more harm than good, especially if your engine has a catalytic converter. All my video ideas, including this one, come from viewers. I hope you'll take time to leave a comment giving me some future video ideas. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please take care, and I look forward to next time.